Hey guys, welcome back as always, my name is Lazar and say hello to 2021 my friends. Now have you missed Papa because I certainly missed you guys. We're gonna waste no time and jump into one of the most powerful shotguns in the game, namely the Phantasma. I'm gonna have something cheap for you, right? Something affordable that most Tenno will be able to build or should be able to build and then we're gonna slowly ramp it all up with Prime Mods, Rivens, Warframe buffs, the works. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player friendly approach. I like to take my time and explain whatever I feel is necessary for newer players. Now this might be a bit inconvenient if you are more of a veteran and you already know most of this stuff. You can skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Phantasma. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just our usual free shots. The Phantasma has two fire modes. In primary fire mode, this one is an automatic beam shotgun, which is absolutely fantastic. And the range in the beams, 20 meters, my friends, with no fall off whatsoever, which is absolutely fantastic. Meaning, you'll get the same damage here as here but that's not all my friends the phantasma has a fantastic area of effect component similar to the ignis wraith it has infinite body punch through. one more time infinite body punch through. meaning it's gonna go through all of the enemies basically that you can aim through but it does not go through walls so if you want to go through walls you're gonna have to build some punch through on it from my point of view it's not really needed and that's the primary fire mode of the Phantasma. In secondary fire mode, this one will be launching a plasma bomb of sorts like that, which will be exploding in a 4.8 meter radius and it's also gonna be launching these tiny little sparkle things, they're called bomblets, and the bomblets will actively go out and seek targets, you see that? Now what you can do with the secondary fire of sorts is fully charge it by holding your secondary fire button boom, and make a bigger explosion and by bigger I mean a more damage basically it's the same size so there's that now the little bomb let's will also get their damage increase so bear that one in mind you got a lot of guaranteed impact procs when it comes to the secondary fire mode first of all the actual bomb second of all the bomblets hitting your target and the little explosion that the bomblets create you see that the little bomblets have their own explosion now because of these status changes of 2020 the primary fire mode of the phantasma is a whole lot more powerful than it used to be but unfortunately the secondary fire mode of the Phantasma is also a whole lot weaker than it used to be. Before it used to be worth to use both of them, now it's only really worth using the primary fire mode. But the secondary proves some uh, nice uh, uh, crowd control or something like that. But anyway, let's have a closer look at what we're dealing with. Mod capacity 60 out of 60 and if your Phantasma comes with only 30 out of 30 jump into actions, plug in that Auto King Catalyst, double that mod capacity and trust me, it's 100% worth it for the Phantasma. Now you can pay 20 plat to have one installed, you can grind one from Nightwave, you can get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie and some events in Warframe also feature the Auto King Catalyst as a possible or guaranteed reward. How many for, huh? Well, you can go with four. Maximum of four, to be honest. If you got a ribbon, you might gonna wanna go to five and if you choose a more simpler build, you can even get away with free forma on the Phantasma, just go for V-Symbols or Madurai as per the usual. What about this thing, the Weapon Plexalus Excellus slot, is it worth unlocking? <sighs> nah, not really I would say, you can go with Silent Battery, for the kicks, for the loose, what about Shotgun Ammo Mutation? You don't really need this one, you can use Carrier with Ammo Case or you can drop pads, but if you wanna feel a bit more comfortable, I guess you can go with something like this. Fatal Acceleration does help to a certain degree, especially with the secondary fire mode, but from my humble point of view, it's not worth unlocking just for this. So if you're a newer player in Warframe and you don't have all the resources just yet, you can save yourself the trouble and just leave this one locked. Accuracy 100. Fantastic, isn't it? Fantastic, but what about, uh, what was it called? Vicious Spread. Vicious Spread. Now this one will be <laughs> reducing the accuracy to 3.2. It's a long conversation why this is like this, what you need to know that it's fine, it's, it's working fine, trust me, as intended, quote unquote, as intended. The problem with that one, look, look what it does to my primary fire mode. It's basically a frontal broom of sorts now, it's all over the place, you can't use that. I mean, of course you can use that if you really want to, but I wouldn't really recommend it. Never mind about the secondary fire mode that it's like, with multi-shot it's gonna go all over the place. It doesn't really affect the little bomblets though, so there's that. By the way, you get five bomblets out of the secondary fire mode. It used to be that the more you charge, the more bomblets you get, but now even if you quick tap or fully charge, you still get those five 
little bomblet. So no vicious spread, which is a pain. Because considering the critical stats on the weapon, more damage, more raw damage would definitely have been good. Critical chance of 3% with a critical multiplier of 1.5x. Well, it can't be all good for the Phantasma, now can it? Of course, these are abysmal. If you really want to go critical chance and critical damage, you gotta go for Harrow, you gotta go for Kavat buff, Arcane Adventure, basically the works. I won't really recommend it, and besides, my friends, the weapon doesn't really need crit, as I will demonstrate later. Fire rate, 12. Good. It's very good. The problem is the magazine capacity of only 11. But the bright side is the reload of 0 0.5 seconds. So basically, in actual gameplay, it kind of goes like this. Bzzz, reload. Bzzz, reload. It's a little bit annoying reloading all the time, but looking on the bright side of things, at least it's quick, right? If you want to make it into a bit more less of annoying of a weapon, might want to try to build some magazine capacity on this one. Multi-shot of 6, so you get 6 beams by default. You see the damage here, 90 total, composed of impact and radiation. It's 90 total considering all the 6 beams, yes? Now the status chance is the opposite of that. It's 22.2 per projectile, so you gotta multiply that by 6, because how it works right now with continuous weapons or beam weapons in Warframe, essentially when you're hitting a single target, all the beams will kinda like converge, on that target, that's why you get only a single damage tick, right? You don't see six damage ticks, for example, right? And the status chance basically does the same thing. So actually, right now, if I was to hit a single target, my status chance would be 133 point... Two. Yeah, that's actually that's actually right. 133.2. Haha, <laughs> I totally didn't che cheat it with that one. Noise alarming, of course. Riven Dispo, 3 out of 5. It's kind of high, considering how powerful this weapon is, so Rivens for the Phantasma are definitely, definitely worth getting right now, as long as you don't spend too much on them. Of course, this is a subjective matter. Secondary fire. When they released the 2020 changes in January, I believe, of last year, basically one year ago, and they made status a whole lot more viable, a whole lot more powerful, the secondary fire mode of the Phantasma had to suffer because of it. Now, what they should have done, from my humble, ever so humble point of view, is increase the critical chance and critical damage on the big boom explosion, so it's actually viable to use. Give it something like 20% with a 2.5x critical multiplier, or 30%, or something like that. Again, as it is now, it's simply not worth using, I'm afraid, except for the guaranteed impact procs, if you guys want to get... Uh, some crowd control out. The fall off is also 50%. It's not a bad fall off, all in all, considering, but again, because of the abysmal critical stats, it's not really worth using. Not all that much, at least. So, enough about that. Let's have a look at a standard build, shall we? And he got damage with point blank, multi shot with health chamber, critical chance. Nope, no critical chance whatsoever. Instead, we go with more multi shot with vigilante armaments. Though, bear in mind, this is an option mod, and I'll show you a couple of options to, you, to your build just a tad later. Considering that we don't have a lot of options when it comes to critical chance and critical damage, what we gotta go is status chance. So initially what we got here is Shell Shock and Toxic Barrage. Now these will be forming corrosive damage, which in my case right now, it's fantastic because I'm dealing with corrupted heavy goons equipped with ferrite armor, so therefore corrosive is the way to go. You might say, hey, why don't you test with viral? We'll show viral as well, all right? But keep in mind that if you're going down to Deimos, which is the brand new, brand new, content that everybody seems to kind of be playing, those enemies down there, immune to viral. So you might as well go with corrosive and heat. Right now in Warframe, heat is the most powerful single element you can have, bar no external factors, essentially, right? So you go with Scattering Inferno, 60-60 heat mod, and you also go with Blaze. Now before the changes, Blaze used to work against us. Right? Because we didn't want to proc more heat. What we wanted back then is to proc more corrosive. But now corrosives are caps at 10 procs. Right? So it's pointless to over proc corrosive. You can't overstrip anymore. That's also true, but you don't really need more than 10 procs. So in this case, Blaze really, really works fantastically well for us. And the last one, this one, also an option slot. So these two are option slots. Shotgun Savvy with 90% status chance. This has been a dead mod for forever until January 2020, when it actually got a significant buff. Go with Shotgun Savvy and 90% status chance. You got 82.1 per projectile. Per projectile. How many projectiles? 15 projectiles. The status chance on this one is just freaking bonkers, man. But before we test, allow me to highlight a couple of extra options, especially when it comes to usability. Range! The range on the Phantasma 
is 20 meters and you know what I don't think you need more than that it's a shotgun I never felt the need for but if you do feel the need for more than that you get 12 extra range with sinister reach right so you're going to 32 meters which is absolutely fantastic and the second usability mod that I would encourage you guys using magazine capacity as stated before ammo stock 60% magazine capacity you reload less right that's the general idea with this one right you go to 80 magazine capacity, it does make a difference in actual gameplay, and you know what, you don't really need more power than this. We'll go to Prime Mods just a little bit later, my friends, keep in mind that not everybody has Prime Mods. Now, this is super cheap build, uh, with one exception, Shellshock. I know, I'm sorry, the problem with Shellshock is that you can, yes, you can farm it from the game. The mission now, Elgar, Planet Terrorist, find all the free secret caches, and then upon extraction, you got about a 5% chance of getting this one or high voltage. You will eventually need to get both of them, but you can also get them from Battle Kit here, the Void Trader, right? So if you see Battle, bring them, spare yourself the trouble, and just get them from Battle. I apologize for Shell Shock. I might say, hey, go for the 90 electricity mod, but in this case, uh uh, go for the 60 60. So no companion, no build down Proteus, so it doesn't skew the test results. Allow me to show you what kind of a status monster the Phantasma is today on level 120. Corrupted heavy goons as per the usual. So we're just gonna go for headshot. I'm actually gonna use the body punch rule, right? Again, we got infinite body punch rule. And if you take a look, take a look at all the statuses. 88 heat procs. That was just absolutely bloody insane. It blows up targets in a matter of nanoseconds because of all those fantastic heat procs. Take a look at that. Now I'm firing a bit more than I need to. I can just like empty half of the magazine or less than that, something like that, and you'll see all the one, the 63 heat procs. Do you notice a trend? I'm maxing out really, really quickly. I'm maxing out my corrosive procs. So that tells me there's a little bit more room to improve on this one. If I would have less corrosive procs, because past 10, in a second or two, the other heat, uh, the other corrosive procs are essentially redundant. If I can replace those with more heat procs, then the build will become more powerful. But one more demonstration, again, for a cheap build, something like that, you can just let the ticks go like that, and it's just gonna absolutely annihilate high-level targets. But how do I do that, huh? How do I reduce, because I'm using the 60-60 mods, what should I do now? Should I go for a 90 mod instead? Well, that's not exactly gonna help you all that much, think about it. In increasing the value of your element on the weapon, you're actually, while reducing your status chance, you're actually increasing the chance for that element to proc. So instead, we're gonna do something that we normally don't really do. We're gonna go with zero upgraded mods. You, you get it? For example, a non-upgraded shell shock like this. It's zero out of three, right? And a non-upgraded toxic barrage. Now, this will this will lower my status chance quite a bit, it's true, but it's also gonna give me a lesser chance of proccing corrosive. And even like this, I'm gonna get to 10 corrosive procs like that, in a matter of like two seconds flat, which is absolutely insane. This will make room for me to proc more heat procs, essentially what I want to get that damage on the target. So allow me to show you. Boom, 105 heat procs on that target. And as before, I am getting 90 heat procs on that one. I am still getting my corrosive procs, which is absolutely fantastic. Still to 10, right? Past 10, it's actually pointless, so there you go, my friends. You can use zero out of three 60-60 mods in this case. Now, I also promised a viral setup, did I not? Yes, of course, we will replace the corrosive with viral. Just keep in mind that if you're going down to demos, that's really not a fantastic option. So we're gonna replace shell shock with cold. Yes, Brr, cold, cold. Frigid blast, do I have zero? Yes, I do have zero. All right, we're gonna like this, right? One eleven point three. Now, let's see the difference. Honestly, instead of corrosive in normal missions, I would go with viral because it does better in more circumstances than the uh, corrosive, but there you go. Beggars can't be choosy. Look at the side. Did you see that 85,000 proc? Did you see that? Absolutely bloody insane. And as before, I'm getting all the bloody procs mama needs or papa needs. Take it or leave it. 116 heat procs there. And of course, 10 viral procs. Look at that. So again, you're going with zero out of three 60-60 mods. Whether you choose corrosive or whether you choose vital, essentially go with zero out of three upgraded mods. 
The beauty of Vital, at least in this case, is that if you're starting out in Warframe, the 60-60 Vital mods are not expensive, right? Frigid Blast or Toxic Barrage, I believe that from the PC trade chat, you're only gonna have to pay a couple of plats, something like 10. And they are farmable from uh, Frigid Blast from Spy Missions and Toxic Barrage from Corrupted Vore in the Void, all right? It's really not all that hard. If you go to recruiting chat, I'm sure there will be a nice Tenno to help you, at least hopefully around the holidays. Now, there's one more build that I do want to talk and show... Uh, I don't want to showcase, I want to talk about, actually. You can go with electricity on the Phantasma and build into Bane mods. I don't encourage Bane mods, but it will be increasing the damage of that electricity proc by 140%, which is huge, and you can get some really, really crazy procs. I believe that Bane mods are a plague on Warframe. I believe they're a terrible idea, just like the Expel mods and so on and so forth, so I don't encourage such bad design decisions. But if you wanna go that route, that's totally up to you. Bane mods are a pain. They're not new player friendly at all because basically the standard Bane mods are too weak to use. You gotta have the primes, you gotta max them all out, you gotta swap them in from mission to mission. Honestly, no, no. If I could get all of the Bane Expel mods and yada yada removed from Warframe, I would definitely have them do that, but I can't, so there you go. We're talking about Rivens instead. Riven mods, huh? Yes. We're gonna go with Prime Point Blank. We're still gonna go with Zero Auto Free, Shell Shock, and Toxic Barrage. And on this one, we have the Phantasma Satyata with damage multi shot and a harmless negative. Harmless because there's no slash on the weapon, so there you go. The ideal Riven for the Phantasma is something like this damage multi, harmless negative. We can also talk about damage multi status chance harmless negative, or damage multi-elements such as heat or electricity, depending on the way that you choose to go for the Phantasma. Okay, that's also a very, very good option. And again, we're talking about 3 out of 5, so the values, ah, not that bad, right? 214% damage, 165% from point blank, prime point blank, and 157 multi-shot when there's a health chamber with 120. So again, it's definitely worth getting a ribbon for this one. As long as you don't need to overpay for it. One more time, the Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 120. Of course, the weapon is gonna be a bit more powerful. Now, if you're patient, which I'm guessing you're not, because I don't know, most players are not, you can just lightly tap your button and then wait for the procs to absolutely murder the target. 80,000 proc, easy mode gameplay. I didn't even see the procs. Now, normally, I don't really wait for procs to proc in normal missions. Maybe you do, I just fire until it's dead. My mama taught me to fire until it's dead, and it's dead now. <laughs> so yes, Rivens will definitely have an impact on your Phantasma, my friends. And there's one more thing which I do want to do, bump up everything with Lady Mirage Prime. Now you might say, hey, go with Harrow. No, I'm not gonna go with Harrow. I'm gonna go with Lady Mirage Prime because she proves a greater benefit, even in these circumstances. As for the actual buffs, we're gonna go standard with corrosive projection since this is the quote-unquote meta. But please, don't feel forced into any of these choices. Cater the build to your specific circumstances. So for example, if you're going up against Corpus, only very few of their units have armor underneath those shields, so you can't forget about corrosive projection. And of course, if your build calls for, I don't know, loot detector, uh, growing power, power donation, and whatever else, just simply go for the aura that you want. Yes, corrosive projection will have an impact on heavily armored targets though. When it comes to Arcane, since we're not going into crit, right, so we're not going into Avenger, the number one Arcane will be Arcane Rage on Headshot, a 15% chance for plus 180% damage to primary weapons for 24 seconds. Now this one is farmed from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. If you're not into Eidolon hunting, if you still find it intimidating, even though it's a lot easier than it used to be, you can simply buy it from the trade chat. It's not that important, it's not that expensive, and you know what, it does make a big impact impact on the weapon. As for our second arcane, if we take Avenger off the table, let's say we're not going into crit at all, you can go for something like this. Arcane Tempo is super cheap and super easy to farm from the first Eidolon down on Cetus. Now this one says the following, on critical hit 15% chance to 90% fire rate for shotguns for 12 seconds. Now you're gonna say, hey dude, it's on critical hit, we're not building crit, isn't that counterintuitive? But considering how many hits you put into your target, this one should be up almost all the time, even with the base critical chance of the weapon, especially if you consider in the Vigilante mods on the Sentinel's weapon. More on that just a minute later. So you can go for this one. It's cheap, right? It's easy to get, but you can also go for acceleration. Now the difference between the two are the following. First of all, the tempo is only for shotguns. Acceleration applies to all primary weapons, right? It's the same 90% fire rate 
right? But it's a 30% chance on crit. Unfortunately, it's only for nine seconds. To be honest, I would go with this one. But if you don't have the resources, go with tempo. And here's the beauty of it. You can stack both of them. You can go acceleration and tempo if you want If you want your weapon just to go and then reload. It's not ideal, but you can go for something like so. As for Sentinels, my friends, this is more impactful for actual crit weapons, but it's gonna do the job just fine in this case as well. Get the Sentinel, any Sentinel you want, it doesn't matter. And on that Sentinel's weapon, make sure you have the Vigilante mods, offense, supplies, fervor, and armaments. If you already have armaments on the weapon, then you can forget about this one here. The point is to get that 20% chance to enhance critical hits for primary weapons. Again, we're not building into critical damage, so the actual dam extra, quote-unquote, damage you're gonna be getting from this one is not huge, but you can get your procs from Arcane Acceleration or Tempo. And at the end of the day, more crits is better than less crits, so there you go. We're gonna pump up the level to 150 on the Corrupted Heavy Goons. We're gonna unpause them so they can hit me and I can get... Not my buffs, because we're not using Arcane Avenger. But still, this should make it a bit more quote-unquote realistic. Activate Mirage's 4 ability for Empower. This is just my Mirage Empower. Her free ability for an absolutely massive damage increase. As well as her ever so lovely Clones. Now, my friends, she can clear house in a matter of nanoseconds. Take a look at that. Absolutely bloody insane. Everything was turned to a crisp. But now you see them, now you don't. The Phantasma. Now, of course, these, this is Mirage Prime, right? And she has that gift of making every weapon look extremely powerful. Here's the bomb that I haven't really showcased, and this is the reason why. Even with Mirage Prime, even with this level of absolutely insane buffs, it barely kills the target. And not all of them. Again, when it comes to the secondary fire mode of the Phantasma, this was the big loser, one of the big losers of the 2020 status changes, unfortunately. Just forget about it and use the primary fire mode. In situations like this one, I really feel the need for a little bit of extra range. So Sinister Reach would have definitely made a big impact in this case. But as you can see, the weapon is extremely powerful. If you're going with Warframe buffs, you're going to absolutely clear house. Steel path, not steel path, whatever the hell you guys choose. And that's pretty much it for the Phantasma. There's nothing left to say except for me to recommend this absolutely glorious beam shotgun. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you got any sorts of feedback for me or would like to suggest some kind of content, please let me know in the comment section down below. Now, in all honesty, I can't exactly promise you that, hey, it will be done by next time or even within a week. But what I can promise you is that I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Welcome to 2021, my friends, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.